morning and welcome to the Library of Congress. I am John Cole. I am the director of the Center for the Book in the Library of Congress. I'm very pleased to welcome you to a very special celebration and event. The Library of Congress is very pleased to welcome several of you back for the first time in many years and also to welcome many new friends. Today we are celebrating both the 100th anniversary of the National Literary Society of the Deaf and the partnership, the new partnership between the National Literary Society of the Deaf and the Center for the Book in the Library of Congress. The Center for the Book is the reading promotion arm of the library, and we have two partnership programs. The first involves every state in the Union, all 50 states, and the District of Columbia have affiliated centers for the book. They help us promote books and write, excuse me, books and reading and libraries and literacy around the country. But the second partnership network, which the National Literary Society of the Deaf has joined, is called National Reading Promotion Partners. These are organizations, and there are 80 of them, 80 organizations around the country that join with us in finding ways to promote reading and literacy and libraries. Many of them are nonprofit organizations. Some are government agencies, and some are literacy promoters and literary societies. Together, once a year, we meet at the Library of Congress to find good ways to cooperate and projects that we can do together to promote literacy and libraries. On the back table, I've given you a pamphlet which describes what happened at the meeting last year in 2006. We have just had the first the meeting for 2007 and the National Literary Society of the Deaf of course is a new partner so they will be joining us next year. I also would like to point out that this morning in roll call, some of you know this, this is the magazine the newspaper on Capitol Hill. They are talking about our celebration. It's not very often that the Library of Congress uh, has an event that is advertised in roll call. They took our press release. They interviewed me. They interviewed Alice. I think they talked to Ricardo, or at least they wanted to, but they talked about his presentation. And Ginny is in it, I'm sorry. No, but your name is misspelled. <laughs> That's all right. So we're very pleased that already in our event that we have managed to uh, raise the awareness of the importance of reading and of involving uh, the deaf community in pro wonderful projects such as this. So I thank you for being here. I look forward to the day, and I especially would like to thank uh, our co-sponsors uh, throughout the deaf community, including the gentleman doing my interpretation right now, for his help in organizing uh, today's event. Welcome. We look forward to a full day and a wonderful day. We are going to begin by looking back at the history of the National Literary Society of the Deaf. Uh, our speaker, appropriately enough, is the president of NLSD, 
uh, his name, and many of you know Ricardo Lopez. Uh, Ricardo is a leader, a young leader in the deaf community. He is someone who is going to be talking about the past, but with Ricardo, we are looking to the future. Uh, Ricardo works in the Office of the Inspector General in the Office of Homeland Security, and he is already a leader in the deaf and especially the deaf Latino community. And it's a pleasure uh, to introduce Ricardo uh, to introduce our day's program. Ricardo? Good morning, everyone. For me, it is definitely a pleasure to be here on this particular day. The, uh, John Cole announced the a partnership of the Center for the Book and the National Literary Society of the Deaf. We treasured this partnership because it gives us more opportunities to share information across the country. It's important for us to be able to provide these kinds of programs. As it has been said, I'm going to talk about a couple of different things that have happened. NLSD is actually a very old organization. It was established in February 1907, a hundred years ago. We are very proud of this fact, and we think it's an important part of our history that NS NLSD is preserving this information. It was established to promote deaf culture, books, and literacy for all peoples in terms of reading. And so this partnership with Center for the Book is an appropriate one. If we can move on to the next slide. I want to talk a little bit about the founders of the NLSD. You can see their names up on the screen. These six individuals were here in Washington, D.C., and they came from all different places across the country, but they came here to attend school. And when they came to school, they decided they would start a literary society. They felt the need to encourage more self-expression and to be able to talk about different issues, and they thought, a literary society would be the way to do it. People could get together and share. Next. Albert Adams, his information is on the screen. He was born in Iowa. He was deafened due to spinal meningitis. He attended public schools. And if you see, his job was a cataloger in the National Museum Library. So you already see this library association. <laughs> Next. Arthur Bryant was born in Massachusetts. He was deafened by scarlet fever. He was an instructor at the Kendall School for the Deaf at Gallaudet what was Gallaudet College. That's what Gallaudet University used to be called. He became ordained as a Baptist minister. Gilbert Erickson. Was born in Minnesota. He also became deaf due to scarlet fever. He was the first secretary of the National Association of the Deaf. He was a very active researcher and was involved in many activities and helped begin many groups. Mr. John Hotchkiss was from Connecticut. 
It is unknown how he became deaf. The research doesn't say. He was a member of the Gallaudet College faculty for 53 years. That's a long time. Herbert Claude Merrill is from Minnesota. He was deaf due to scarlet fever. He worked for the U.S. Weather Bureau. Roy J. Stewart was from Michigan. He was partially deaf due to scarlet fever, but then later became fully deaf after an accident. He worked for the U.S. Census Bureau. Recently, Francis, uh, past President Francis Higgins was a very active individual and had remained very active with NS, uh, NLSD for many years. Uh, it was involved with, there was a candlelight vigil for him uh, due to his passing several, a couple of years ago. He was a professor of chemistry at Gallaudet University. Oh, excuse me, I mean Gallaudet College. He was an important person who helped the organization remain vital. It, he is important to us. I met him, and I apologize that his picture is not very clear. Jeanette Mortzfeldt was from Texas. She was employed by the old U.S. Coast and Geodetic, Geodetic Survey. She alternated positions within the society, occasionally president, occasionally secretary. She was the one that helped mentor us in terms for the deaf community that literacy is so important. I mean, I grew up reading books. I love books. I learned language th first through books, and then I learned my second language in public schools as well as books. Once I started attending public schools, I couldn't understand what was being said. To compensate for that, I would then read to catch up with the rest of the class. So I really thank books for that. And so I was able to come to the D.C. area and meet Ms. Mortzfeldt, and she taught us how important it was to keep doing that, to keep reading, and how important reading and literacy was to the deaf community, and that reading can be enjoyable, and literacy can mean many different things. It's even a way of expression. There's some, for example, beautiful American Sign Language poetry, and it's important to be able to express that and to not only think about the words, but to think about communication and to and how that relates to thinking. In talking about the legacy of the NLSD, it has continued in many different ways. As we said, it was a means for the deaf community to express themselves. They would get together and do storytelling. There have been so many people who have gone to residential schools for the deaf and in their younger days, they'd sit around and play language games. And sometimes they would talk about things that happened in their lives. Or they would share their experiences. And that group became a form of a literary society. And that language became a form of literature. NLSD also has, throughout the years, encouraged, uh, brought in different speakers that talked about different areas of their lives, whether it was artistic literacy, poetry. People have talked about their jobs. Sometimes they've shared history, some fascinating topics in history. So that's why we feel it's important to have those kind of events still. 
Today is a very important event for NLSD because we want to continue that type of work. We do have some NLSD board members in the room right now. It's wonderful to see their faces, but we want to see the organization continue into the future. We've celebrated 100 years thus far. And now with this partnership, we are looking forward to another 100 years. And you never know what's going to happen now with technology as it is. Now, as it's affecting our deaf community, we should not be afraid of it. We should embrace it. It's a challenge that the community can face into the future. I am now going to ask all of you at NLSD and Center for the Book to become a part of our work. We have things going on all over the country. We'll be working with public libraries in numerous ways. We're partnering with different groups, and we need all the support we can get. We need to get information disseminated. We need to teach hearing people about deaf culture. So I would like to conclude my presentation today by saying thank you to all of you for coming, and I look forward to seeing you all again and again at upcoming NLSD events at your local public library. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. It occurs to me, listening to Ricardo, that the first network that I mentioned, the affiliated state centers, also are going to be a new means, I think, for dis disseminating information. And in a sense, uh, we today are celebrating two partnerships. Uh, for NLSD. The overall Center for the Book Reading Promotion Partnership Program, but also a new connection with all of the affiliated state centers. It's now my pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Uh, Dr. Robert Davila is now, of course, as you know, the ninth president of Gallaudet University. He is an educator, he is a student, he is an administrator, and when I met him today, he reminded me, or he told me, he also, in his student days, was a heavy user of the Library of Congress, that he was very pleased to be back, and I said, well, I am very pleased to welcome you back in a different role entirely and as a partner of the Library of Congress as we look ahead. Dr. Davila has, is a graduate of Gallaudet University. He received his bachelor's degree in 1953, followed by master's and doctorate degrees in education from Hunter College and from Syracuse University, respectively. He became Gallaudet's ninth president on January 1st, 2007, bringing with him, as I have indicated, a depth of experience and a wonderful array of support and friends uh, from both the deaf and the hearing communities. It's a pleasure to have him back at the Library of Congress and to welcome him to this podium, Dr. Davila. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Cole, for your nice introduction. As Mr. Cole explained, I have a relationship with 
both the Library of Congress and with the National Literary Society for the Deaf. As I was reading Ricardo's presentation, slides, slides, and notice the names of the founders. My name's not among them, <laughs> but I personally know one of the founders. He was the speaker at the 50th eh, celebrating, celebration in New York City of this organization, National Literary Society for the Deaf. At that time, I was president at the Gallaudet University uh, alumni um, chapter in New York City area. And so we decided to have a celebration because the Literary Society was a big and important organization and activity in the deaf community in those years. So we invited Mr. Roy Stewart, who was one of the founders. I have forgotten that he was a founder, but I saw his name over there on the list. And he went to New York and gave us a one nice talk. So I really go back to both organizations. As Mr. Cole explained, I used to come here often to do my homework. It was maybe a 20 minute run and hard walk from Gallaudet. Couldn't afford the buses in those days. We used to run up here to the library. And I did a lot of my homework here. At that time, Gallaudet was a very small school with 240 students. Our library holdings were limited. We wanted the real library. We came to the Library of Congress. Years later, when I was in my PhD program at Syracuse, I again flew into Washington, D.C. to study here in the library. I did a lot of my research for my dissertation here in this library, too. So I really thank the library for being helpful to me personally. And I thank the Literary Society for the Deaf for its activism, for its many years of advocacy and promotion of reading among the deaf. Because literary literacy is very important to deaf people. You read the newspapers and you see that many young people are having a difficulty learning to read. They do poorly in school because of their inability to read and understand everything they see. We also face the same issues and problems in teaching deaf children. Deaf children learn to read differently, but our responsibility is equally important, and the results are magical, wonderful. When you see a young deaf child sitting down, open a book, and read it with understanding, it's exciting. And uh, we try to continue to promote that. All over the country, we lack a national curriculum. So we try to share best practice information with each other. The children are now attending all of the school districts in the U.S., over 16,000 school districts. And there are deaf children attending many, many schools. So many, it's almost impossible to locate every deaf child attending a school. But the one thing that all of them need, equally the same, is assistance in learning to read so they can enjoy life and learn independently. At Gallatin, we have uh, two national demonstration schools, an elementary school, the Kendall Demonstration Elementary School, second, the model, model secondary school for the deaf. These two schools are mandated by Congress to provide technical assistance to schools all over the country. And these three, two schools have uh, three uh, priorities to guide their technical support to other programs. First, we are focusing on transition 
a very important priority also helping young people to understand how they can make the change from high school to college and study and learn independently. And second is literacy, how we can share best practice information with schools all over the country so the young deaf children can learn to improve their ability to read and understand what they read. And third is provide support to parents and families so that they can learn how they can be members of the education team for their own deaf members. Three priorities. We'll talk a little bit about literacy. We share share best practice information. Uh, there are many people in this room who remember the days when many things were close to us because they were not accessible. The theaters, television, other performances were closed. There was no captioning, uh, no interpreters. So we all had to go back and read the book. Remember my wife and I going to the movies, sitting there watching a movie without captions. We would debate among each other what the plot was and what our results, <laughs> outcomes were. Then we would go to the library and look up the book and find both of us were wrong, but it was still fun. <laughs> now uh, we can, of course, depend on the printed word to understand everything that people who can hear can understand at the same time. It's very important. The literacy program at, in the clerk uh, center at Gallatin that includes KDS and MHSD focuses on helping schools to develop dialogue journals as a teaching tool and an exercise for young children to learn to record their activities, tell us stories about their happenings and write them down, it's very important. We also help schools with shared reading and writing. Uh, help them teach children to read independently. We will provide a, a assistance with a guided reading and writing, and writing. And we also help our teachers to uh, read to children and we have a number of writers, workshops for young people that includes our children who are deaf. So these are many things that we help a professional community to really understand so that they can turn around and help our deaf children to read better. Because without reading, even in this day of the internet, uh, you still have to learn to read. You still have to be able to read. Although we are moving in a large way to video, uh, we are not uh, get, letting go entirely of the printed word. It will always continue to be critically important and required. I myself cre credit a lot of my uh, educational success to the fact that I was a good reader. In one of my previous homes, I designed a very special room it was my office, home office, but I designed special four walls of bo bookcases designed to accommodate uh, pocket books. I couldn't afford the, the larger hardcover books, so I used to go out there and buy pocket books. At one time, I had almost 4,000 books in that room from floor, floor to ceiling. I can tell you, I read every word of those 4,000 books, every word. I would read two or three books a week, and on vacation, maybe read six or seven. But he helped me over the years, as he, I know he has helped you also. And now we need to continue to promote the concept of reading and help young deaf children to learn to appreciate and enjoy reading because they will have a better life, a better quality of life, more enjoyment out of the things they experience every day. And so I want to thank the Library of Congress, and I want to thank the National 
a literary society for the deaf, for the new partnership, the combining of energies and goals so that we can help deaf people to continue to be good readers, continue to enjoy life, and to have access to all the information available to everyone, including themselves. Thank you very much for inviting me to be here with you. I'm enjoying this. I want to stay for a while. Thank you. I am pleased now to welcome to the platform um, another newcomer on the Washington scene. It's Ginny Cooper, who is the new chief librarian of the District of Columbia Public Library. We are very pleased to have her in Washington, D.C. Previously, uh, she worked as the director of the Multnomah County Public Library in Portland, Oregon from 2000, excuse me, from Ginny from 1990 to the year 2002. Then she came to Brooklyn Public Library where she was director. In the library world, those are two very big, important jobs. And now she has agreed to tackle another big and important job as the chief librarian of the District of Columbia Public Library. We're very pleased to have Ginny Cooper here. Ginny. It is my great pleasure to be with you today, for we all care about the same thing, about words, words that are read, that tell stories, that help us with all that we do. I am especially pleased to be here today to offer our congratulations to the National Literary Society for the Deaf, selling, celebrating their 100th anniversary this year, and to the Center for the Book on their new partnership to promote books, reading, and literacy to the deaf community here in the District of Columbia and across the nation. The DC Public Library is fortunate to have long-standing partnerships with both organizations. We became a state affiliate for the Center for the Book in 1999 when the DC Center for the Book was established at the MLK Library. The National Literary Society for the Deaf and DC Public Library co-sponsored our first joint event at the library in 2004, a week-long series entitled Celebrating 30 Years of Deaf Awareness Programs at the District of Columbia Public Library. On March 28th, our eighth joint program will celebrate Deaf History Month. Please visit our library to witness a proclamation from the Office of the Mayor declaring March 13th through April 15th as Deaf History Month in the District of Columbia. Also, come and enjoy a book talk with Dr. Yurker Anderson of Gallaudet University and a screening and discussion of Through Deaf Eyes, documenting the experience of the deaf community in the United States from 1814 to the present. See open captioned clips from the film all day through the window on G Street, thanks to WETA Public Television. And at this time, I want to recognize and thank Alice Hagemeyer. 
the DC Public Library appointed our first librarian to the deaf community in 1976. Alice built our collection of books, videos, and other resources for the deaf community. She developed the Red Notebook as a one-stop source for libraries and librarians on resources for, by, and about the deaf community. Since her retirement in 1991, <laughs> she has continued her advocacy for, for library services for the deaf and also serves as the National Literary Society for the Deaf's Outreach Coordinator. I am pleased to tell you that this summer, when 25,000 librarians will come here to the District of Columbia for their annual conference, they will award Alice the Society's highest accolade, Honorary Life Membership, in recognition of her outstanding contributions to libraries and to librarianship. Congratulations, Alice. The DC Public Library is at a crossroads where deaf and hearing cultures of all ages meet. We will continue to collaborate with the Center for the Book and the National Soci Literary Society for the Deaf through monthly book and author talks, American Sign Language and Deaf Culture programs at the library, and we will work with NLSD headquartered in Maryland as they develop a local DC chapter. Above all, we look forward to expanding our cooperation, creating new programs and services for the deaf and hearing children at the library through jointly sponsored American Sign Language storytelling programs, for example. We hope to get all our kids excited about books and reading and open the world of libraries to them. Our vision is engaging minds, expanding opportunities for all. Again, congratulations to the Center for the Book and to the National Literary Society for the Deaf on this new and important partnership. Thank you. I am now pleased to welcome back to the platform uh, Nancy Block. Nancy is the Chief Executive Officer of the National Association of the Deaf. Uh, I also, in Googling Nancy, saw her, the description that she is the first woman to hold this post, and I congratulate you on that, and I'm very pleased to have you back at the Library of Congress, Nancy. We'd like to hear from you. Please come to the podium. Thank you for welcoming me. It's wonderful to be back. Really, it is a beautiful day for this particular event. The weather couldn't be better, right? We've been looking forward to the warm weather. I applaud the Center for the Book and the National Literary Society of the Deaf for their historical partnership. You have a lot to celebrate. Thank you, Ricardo, for sharing the history of NLSD. I was amazed. The NAD was formed a little bit before the Literary Society, but the Literary Society has a rich history. Many of the leaders of the NAD were also involved with the NLSD, so their histories are parallel. Both organizations have had literacy in their hearts, so thank you. 
This partnership is also significant and symbolic. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about your, myself. I was born deaf. Like 90% of deaf children, I was born to hearing parents. My parents were not college educated, but they instilled in me a love of reading, a love for books at a very early age. The house was always filled with books and magazines. We would often have discussions about what we had read and what was going on and learned from the things we had read. When I was three years old, my mother said, Nancy, it's time to go to our neighborhood library. And that became a tradition for us. The library became my second home. For me, reading opened up a world of magic, like Bob was saying, an opportunity. And that's still true today. I read books everywhere I go. I'm vacation, at work, wherever I am. So it's a special treat to be here on this historical occasion. Text, the printed word, in any form, whether it be through books, magazines, newspapers, the Internet, mobile devices, is an important component to the American deaf community. We are visual people. We see the world and what is happening in it through our eyes. So, the printed word is significant. We used to have our own newspapers. Do you remember those days? We had newspapers for the deaf from different organizations and clubs. They would print their own newspapers. The numbers have dwindled, but instead we have blogs everywhere. So that in itself will encourage literacy as well as reading. It's important to place things in perspective in terms of text access. Text access to the telephone was not available to the deaf community until the 1970s when we first had our TTYs. Text access to television didn't become available until the 1980s when captioning was finally developed for television. And now we're fighting to get captioning for movies. That's our next hurdle, are the theaters. And it is happening. The numbers are growing, but it's still not happening enough. That's not that long ago. And we're still fighting for our access rights. Those historical tidbits that I mentioned are actually a part of the PBS film documentary entitled Through Deaf Eyes that has been mentioned earlier. That film will be highlighted this afternoon, so I encourage you all to stay for that. The NLSD, with its rich history, in collaboration with the NAD, as I said earlier, the NAD was founded in 1880, and the focus since then has remained unchanged, to fight for the civil and access rights for the American deaf community. We also have the Friends of Libraries for Deaf Action organization, a woman named Amy Bopp. Is she here, Amy? With Alice Hagemeyer, Amy and Alice have been an incredible partner to the organization Friends of the Library for Deaf Action and part of the NAD as well as NLSD. Between these three organizations, they promote literacy and reading efforts. They encourage the affiliation to NAD uh, to all their members to make gr uh, greater uses of their neighborhood library, to expand their library's resources, to incorporate 
deaf culture, American Sign Language literature, and deaf history-related materials. And also they encourage the use of those materials by parents of deaf children so that they know how to inspire their children to read and develop literacy. Now remember, as I mentioned, 90% of deaf children are born to hearing parents. So the library plays a vital role. And it's, so then it's important that the libraries have the materials they need. We take a special pride in the collaborative efforts within the NAD, partnering with Friends of the Library, FOLDA, and NLSD. So from all of us at the NAD, we congratulate the NLSD on its 100th anniversary and on its par partnership with Center for the Book. Congratulations, and we look forward to many, many more years of working together and supporting your efforts. Thank you. It was important that we also have the perspective of a librarian on our events today. And of course, because Gallaudet is so important in every way to the deaf community, to the Washington, D.C. community, and to the world, we thought it was appropriate to have a librarian from Gallaudet. And Diana Gates is with us, and Diana is a reference and instruction librarian at Gallaudet. Diana? Good morning. It's wonderful to be here on this exciting day at this event. As a deaf individual and a deaf librarian at Gallaudet University, it is an honor to attend this momentous occasion. As a late deafened individual, I do remember going to my public library, and I just happened by chance to find a biography about Mabel Bell, the wife of Alexander Graham Bell. She was deaf. That was the beginning of my deaf literary adventures. In my current position at Gallaudet, I not only teach students how to use the library, but I promote leisure reading, and we do a lot of book discussion together. Recently, I was at the museum, and I noticed there was a painting on the wall, and the inscription next to the painting said, Abe Lincoln's first book. Most of the paintings I had seen of Lincoln show him as, you know, 20-year-old or older. So I, I took a look at this painting, and there was Lincoln as a very young man. He had been painted by an artist named Horace Pippins, an American artist. And it shows Lincoln laying on a bed in a very dark room, you know, the log cabin, of course, with a book in his hand, reading. And it was difficult to see him in the picture because the painting was so dark. And I remember the stories, you know, they've talked about how Lincoln would often walk miles to other places so that he could borrow and return books. He was a very enthusiastic reader and learning to read. We also know that he was an excellent storyteller. I think that's one of the important treasures of our nation. The story of a young man who was a future president and his love for reading and learning. 
Lincoln would have loved to have been near a public library. It was President Lincoln, of course, who signed the charter for Gallaudet University. And without Gallaudet, perhaps the NLSD, the Literary Society, would not have been founded. Oh, by the way, I grew up in central Illinois, so I know a little bit about Lincoln and the connections that he has to education and reading. There's no doubt that many deaf people favor books or literary experiences in which we can share them with friends and family or through libraries in the various programs. Now these literary ties are being incorporated at a national level. The Library of Congress and the National Literary Society uh, are hosting today's event. It's a recognition and celebration of this historical occasion of their collaboration. The partnership for the Center for the Book and NLSD. This being a partner with the Center for the Book is an honor because it provides wider opportunities in promoting deaf culture, books, films, and literary experiences through programs and libraries about the deaf. As we've already heard today, you know that the NLSD was established in 1907, and through those years, a number of Gallaudet professors and students would speak at the monthly meetings. For a few years, the meetings were held on campus. With NLSD's long history, this partnership would not have taken place. I'd like to quote a longtime member of the Literary Society and former Gallaudet chemistry professor, Mr. Francis Higgins, who you may already know. He was talking at the 65th anniversary of the Literary Society. He says, Society has every reason to be proud of its long service in the literary field. It has attracted many speakers at both the local and national level. Those who were fortunate to be present at those meetings without a doubt benefited from hearing and talking with these individuals, and the hope is that the society will ever continue to serve the deaf by providing the means for hosting literary programs. Mr. Higgins' words are evidence of those who have worked very hard to make this partnership available, possible. And we'll try to ensure that this partnership continues and benefits everyone, regardless of whether they're hearing or deaf across the nation. We look forward to future programs from this partnership. And we'd like to recognize and thank the Center for the Book and Mr. John Cole, the National Literary Society of the Deaf, and its president, Ricardo Lopez, the National Association for the Deaf, and CEO Nancy Block, Friends for Libraries for the Deaf Action, FOLDA, founder Alice Hagemeyer, the Martin Luther King Library, and the Public Library for its support all these years. Thank you, Ginny. And for all the work that made the partnership possible. Thank you. Before I introduce Alice, who will be our final speaker this morning, uh, I do want to remind you about this afternoon's program. Uh, we will begin shortly after 1 o'clock, I believe, in this room uh, to see preview excerpts of the new documentary film that has already been discussed here today, Through Deaf Eyes. 
Fine. That will last for about one hour. And at 2 o'clock, uh, we are offering tours of the Library of Congress's magnificent Thomas Jefferson building across the street in American Sign Language. And these will be done by the Library of Congress Deaf Association. And we hope that you are able to be here and take advantage of the full day. Uh, Alice Hagemeyer has been mentioned several times today. Uh, you know that she is, among other things, on our program. We call her the founder of Friends of Libraries for Deaf Action, which she founded in 1986. But as Ginny said, Cooper said, and gave us an outline, we know of the many other activities uh, that Alice has been involved in and the many ways that she has supported not just this event, but the partnership that we're celebrating today. But Alice does not rest, and she has a couple of new developments that she would like uh, to describe to you to conclude our program. Alice? Okay. Hello. I am so proud to be a librarian. I always enjoy programs like this. I feel so fortunate to have been a librarian. I really have to thank Gallaudet for that. You may already know, when I grew up, I had never been to a public library. Did you know that? My parents weren't educated. We lived on a farm in a rural area. I never saw a book in my house at all. What I saw were magazines, but I always looked forward to visiting my grandfather's house. My grandfather always gave me magazines because he loved to read. Collier magazine, you may be familiar with that. I loved it. It was fascinating. My grandfather would give me books and magazines to bring home and read, and I was the only person in my family to read my parents would listen to the radio because, you know, we're talking about back in the 1940s, just like Bob mentioned. We're about the same generation. We were in college the same time. But fortunately, I, I was very fortunate uh, to have attended a school for the deaf in Omaha, which was about 500 miles from my home. As I look back now, I can't understand it. How were my parents so willing to let me move to a school that far away? But I ended up not knowing them so well because I was I lived at school. I no, love my family nonetheless. Anyway, while I was at school, up until that time, I never went to a public library. I'd been in the classroom, and they encouraged us to read in the classroom, I, but I didn't feel that sense of inspiration. Our school had a literary program that really helped me develop this love. And I remember always looking forward to those literary programs given by other deaf people. So I was fortunate then when I came to Gallaudet College. I was so excited. And it was the first time that I had seen a library. I mean, my, my high school had a library very, very small. And they would encourage us to come here to the Library of Congress so I used to come here all the time. I love it here. I never dreamed that I would be a librarian, that I want to be one. But the Gallaudet librarian encouraged me. So how I got the job at D.C. Public Libraries, I have no idea. Well, Ginny, maybe you'll be surprised. It was through some poll. <laughs> the president of Gallaudet Library was also on the board of the D.C. Public Library, so... Long story short, I, I have to thank a lot of my coworkers to who encouraged me to do something for the deaf because at that time there was nothing available. I got my degree at University of Maryland after that, and I noticed libraries had no books about deaf people. And we're talking about 1970 to 74. I would ask, can you name a deaf author? Can you name any deaf persons? And they couldn't, and I thought... I'm a librarian, I'm deaf, so that's why I ended up developing the Red Book, the Red Notebook. This is what people know me for. At, we now have a new company. Um, there are three directories that have been developed as a result. One about books of, by, and about deaf. 
another one about deaf organizations, and the third directory is speakers, names of speakers. Those directories are complete and are ready online. So please pick up a pink page in the back that has the information where you can find that information online. It's a it's a new thing, and so we look forward to it growing. It's very exciting. And as our list grows, we will incorporate that into the Red Notebook. There's the advertisement on the back. So I'll, I'll leave that on the table. With that, I know people are starving. You're hungry. It's nice to see everybody here, and I'm really excited that you are here to w witness this wonderful collaboration and as Nancy Block said, you know, all the support for the library services and the deaf community that have been happening. I think the NLSD should work also with Gallaudet and the NAD because, you know, the world looks at us here in Washington, D.C. as being the model. So we should work together. And also, thank you to my beloved colleague, John Cole, and others. Thank you very much.